Today I'll show you how to sew your own bunting. You can use whatever colour combinations you desire to theme your bunting. You can even go on and get creative and decorate your bunting with fabric paints, ribbons or a plique. My name is Elfie Sew. I create sewing tutorials for all skill levels. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy what you see. For this project you will need some cotton lawn or quilting cotton. It's a great scrap buster as you only need small cuts of fabric. In addition, you will need your template. I've included a free downloadable pattern which you can print out at home. Otherwise you can make your own, just draw a triangle of the size you desire and use that. You will also need some bias binding tape. You can make this yourself or buy it pre-made like the roll shown. I will link to a video of how to make your own bias binding if you wish to. To begin, I recommend you always start by washing your fabric and then you can wash your bunting and you don't have to worry if you get caught in the rain. Dry and press your fabric so it's wrinkle free. Here is a cutting pattern that is most fabric efficient. If your fabric has a pattern, then you will need to consider the direction and the position of elements in your design, such as flags and flowers. Otherwise, this is the best use of your fabric. I will be making three plain colours of flag, cutting two triangles per a flag. I'll show you three ways of getting a neat, fast cut on the three colours. You can pick the method that suits you. Once cut, pin two triangles together, right sides together. We're going to sew one centimetre from the edge, from the short side to the point, back up to the short side. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and end, and when you reach the point, you want to leave your needle down, raise your footer, pivot your fabric, and then lower your footer again before resuming your stitch. Now 
Next, take your scissors and cut away the seam allowance at the point. Don't cut the thread or you'll create a hole. Turn your triangle inside out, helping the tip out. Use a pencil if you need, and then press your triangle flat. Do all the triangles the same. Cut the excess from the top edge of the triangle. You can use pre-made bias tape or make your own. If you wish to make your own, I have a video linked above and in the description below for you to check out. The bias tape I have made and used in this video is 2cm wide. The commercial roll shown is 1.5 centimetres. Once you have decided on a pattern for your flags, you can begin to connect them to your bias tape. Starting from the end, leave about 70 centimetres to a metre of bias tape. This should give you enough room to attach it to most objects and flexibility to place it where you want. Take your triangle and align your short edge into the centre fold and fold the tape around it like this, pinning it in place. Measure a gap of 15 centimetres and place your next triangle. You can adjust these measurements to suit your needs. If you're doing a huge area of bunting, you may want to spread them out more to reduce how much fabric you need. Fold the tape between each flag and pin in place to help hold things tighter. Pin all triangles in this manner and then measure another 1 metre for the tie at the other end and cut. Wonder clips are an alternative to pins for this. Take this to your machine and sew along the edge of the tape opposite the fold. You want to go as close to the edge in a nice even distance. I'm doing it at 1 8 inch from the edge. I am also using a matching thread so it can't be seen but you can use a contrast if your design prefers it.
is your finished bunting, you can make it in a variety of colours, length and size to suit your needs. It stores neatly and you can reuse it for years to come. If you have enjoyed watching and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to stay notified of new videos and techniques. My name is Elfie Sew and I create sewing tutorials for all abilities looking to learn. Happy sewing!